Good morning, everyone. Welcome to worship on this third Sunday in Easter. It's good to have all of you here this morning. Um, It is Family Worship Sunday, as you can see, and we'll um, have a special message with the children this morning. A few announcements just to, um, as reminders, every Family Worship Sunday now through probably the end of the year, we're going to do a noisy offering um, with coins and whatever noisy, yeah, okay, coins make noise, yeah, (laughs) whatever. What was I thinking? Rocks? I don't know. Um, (laughs) We'll always have the bucket out there, and then during the children's message, if anybody's forgotten, you can, we'll bring it round, and you can throw in your coins or whatever, and that will all go to Crossways Camping Ministries. Um, Please pay attention in the bulletin or weekly word that you have another week plus a couple days to bring, if you haven't brought sheets or bedding or whatever we need for the Synod Assembly Service Project, the bunk bed build, you can still bring those. Um, Carol and Marie and I will deliver that to the Synod Assembly when we go. Fortunately, that was our pickup point. Um, Also note that I'll be gone this coming weekend um, yes, this coming weekend, Pastor Trafine Shruba will be here to supply. And then the following Saturday, I'm also going to be gone, coming back from Synod Assembly, and Pastor Mike from St. Stephen's will supply on Saturday, but I'll be here on Sunday. So just if you have need of a pastor during those times, please get a hold of the office, um, and they can, Carla will hook you up to the to the pastor on call, and if it's a real emergency and you can't get a hold of Carla, call me, leave me a message, and I'll immediately um, call the pastor. And anyway, we'll we'll take care of you. Um, I believe is that all the announcements, Carla? I don't think there's anything. Anybody else have anything I'm supposed to remind you about? No. Nope. Um, we will remember in our prayers today, or celebrate in our prayers today, the baptism of Carson Keaton James. Stakowitz, who was baptized yesterday here in our worship service, so we celebrate with the Stakowitz family. Um, and seeing as there's nothing else, let's get down to the work of worship, or actually, let's get up to the work of worship. Please stand as you are able. And our readings, our gospel actually has a lot, well, there's fishermen and fishing, and we're going to be talking about baptism, so hence the picture on the screen. We begin in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. In the waters of baptism, we have passed over from death to life with Jesus Christ, and we are a new creation. For this saving mystery and for this water, let us bless God who was and who is and who is to come. Blessed are you, O God, maker and ruler of all things. Your voice thundered over the waters at creation. You water the mountains and send springs into the valleys to refresh and satisfy all living things. Through the waters of the flood, you carried those in the ark to safety. Through the sea, you led your people Israel from slavery to freedom. In the wilderness, you nourished them with water from the rock, and you brought them across the river Jordan to the promised land. By the baptism of his death and resurrection, Your son, Jesus, has carried us to safety and freedom. The floods shall not overwhelm us, and the deep shall not swallow us up. For Christ has brought us over to the land of promise. He sends us to make disciples, baptizing in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Pour out your Holy Spirit. Wash away sin in this cleansing water. Clothe the baptized with Christ and claim your beloved children, no longer slave and free, no longer male and female, but one with all the baptized in Christ Jesus, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. Marlene, just wait one second. If the children want to come over, because I really want, would like you to learn the song, whoever, Aaron and whoever else is over there, So we're going to sing this song three times. The first time, Marlene, we're going to sing it kind of softly. And then we're going to get kind of louder. 
And then we're really going to get louder on the third time through. So if you stand so you can see the screen, just maybe it's so you can see the screen, whether that's in the second pew or to see the words on the screen. And so we're going to sing kind of quiet, and then we're louder, and we're louder. Once really soft. The love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Do you know what? Do you want to just hit the button to go along with this? Eric's going to lead the prayer of the day. Let us pray. God of glory and majesty, we join our voices with all of the heavens and earth to sing your praise. Reveal yourself to us through the power of the risen Christ and inspire us to follow him, the one who is our life and hope, Jesus Christ, lover of all humanity. Amen. You may be seated. Alexis, it's time for the psalm. We're going to do the readings in a little bit different order because the children's message today is based on the reading from Acts. So we'll do the psalm, we'll do the gospel, which you may remain seated for, and then we will do... Hello, you can come on up. Let's see, Alexis is going to read the odd verses and you will respond with the bold so do you want to hold this like right up by your mouth and you're going to read with the light colored verses okay let's start with that yep I, I will exalt you i will exalt you O lord because you have lifted me up and i have not let my enemies triumph over me O lord my god i cried out to you and you restored me to health you brought me up, O oh Lord, from the dead. You restored my life as I was going down to the grave. Sing praise to the Lord, all you faithful. Give thanks in holy remembrance. God's wrath is short. God's favor lasts a lifetime. Weeping spends the night, but joy comes in the morning. While I felt secure, I said, I shall never be disturbed. You, Lord, with your favor made me as strong as the mountains. Then your face, then you hid your face, and I was filled with fear. I cried to you, O Lord. I pleaded with my Lord, saying, What profit is there in my blood if I go down to the pit? I will, will the dust praise you or declare your faithfulness? Hear me, O oh Lord, and have mercy upon me. O oh Lord, be my helper. You have turned my wailing into dancing. You have put off my slack, sackcloth and clothed me with joy. Therefore my heart sings to you without ceasing. O oh Lord, my God, I will give thanks forever.
You may remain seated for, we'll do the gospel acclamation, Marlene. Holy Gospel according to John, the 21st chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. After Jesus appeared to his followers in Jerusalem, which if you remember was in the locked room, first without Thomas and then with Thomas, Jesus showed himself again to the disciples by the Sea of Tiberias, and he showed himself in this way. Gathered there together were Simon Peter, Thomas called the twin, Nathaniel of Cana in Galilee, the sons of Zebedee and two other of his disciples. Simon Peter said to them, them, I'm going fishing. They said to him, we'll go with you. They went out and got into the boat, but that night they caught nothing. Just after daybreak, Jesus stood on the beach, but the disciples did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to them, children, you have no fish, have you? They answered, no. He said to them, cast the net to the right side of the boat and you will find some. So they cast it, and now they were not able to haul it in because there were so many fish. That disciple whom Jesus loved said to Peter, It is the Lord. When Simon Peter heard that it was the Lord, he put on some clothes, for he was naked and jumped into the sea. But the other disciples came in the boat, dragging the net full of fish, for they were not far off from the land, only about a hundred yards. When they had gone ashore, they saw a charcoal fire there with fish on it and bread. Jesus said to them, bring some of the fish that you have just caught. So Simon Peter went aboard and hauled the net ashore full of large fish, 153 of them. And though there were so many, the net was not torn. Jesus said to them, come and have breakfast. Now none of the disciples dared to ask him, who are you? Because they knew it was the Lord. Jesus came and took the bread and gave it to them and did the same with the fish. This was now the third time that Jesus had appeared to his disciples after he was raised from the dead. When they had finished breakfast, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? He said to him, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said to him, feed my sheep or my lambs. A second time he said to them, Simon, son of John, do you love me? He said, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said to him, tend my sheep. Jesus said to him the third time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter felt hurt because he said to him the third time, do you love me? And he said to him, Lord, you know everything. You know that I love you. Jesus said to him, feed my sheep. Very truly, I tell you, when you were younger, you used to fasten your own belt and to go wherever you wished. But when you grow old, you will stretch out your hands, and someone else will fasten a belt around you and take you where you do not wish to go. He said this to indicate the kind of death by which Peter would glorify God. After this, Jesus said to Peter, follow me. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. So as the children are coming up, think about what might that have to do about baptism, about identity as beloved children. And maybe it wasn't that Jesus was forgiving Peter in that story, but Jesus was reminding Peter of who he was, someone who God loves and someone who God was going to use um, to build up God's church. And the whole thing about Peter getting dressed before he jumped into the water, I have no clue. So if the children like to come up, and Larissa, we've got a story, and artwork. Hip on the step. You know what? Y'all look like a rainbow here with all your colors on.
got Larissa, who's going to read the story. We got Kaylin and Alexis and Lily and Aaron. Uh, um, that mm, Sierra, right? Did I say Kaylin? There's Kaylin. There's Elena. All right, let's hear a story about a guy named Saul. Saul was a bully, and he hated anyone who was a Christian. Saul wanted all Christians thrown in jail, but God had other plans for Saul. Even though Saul was a mean person, God loved him and had a big surprise for him. Saul had been ordered to go to Damascus. He smiled slyly to himself. If any Christians lived in Damascus, he would find them. He would arrest them and bring them back to Jerusalem. Saul smiled confidently. He had arrested Christians a hundred times before, and he could do it again. Suddenly, swirls of dust blew up from the road. Saul covered his eyes with his arms. Storms are coming, he shouted to his men. Crash, flash, kabash. Saul fell to the ground. A blinding light exploded around him, and a strong voice spoke to him. Saul, Saul, why do you hurt me? Saul rubbed his eyes. He couldn't see anyone. Who are you? Saul stuttered. I am Jesus, the voice said. I am not dead. I am very much alive, and I have plans for you. Go into the town and wait. Saul and his new... Saul and his men were speechless. They could hear the voice, but they couldn't see anyone. Saul waved his hand in front of his face. My eyes, I can't see. Someone get me up. Saul ordered because he could not see. Saul's men led him by the hand, by the hand into Damascus. There Saul waited and prayed. He wasn't mean or bad anymore. God had touched Saul's heart. A man named Ananias was in Damascus. Ananias loved Jesus. God told Ananias to go to Saul and pray so that he might see again. But Lord, Ananias said, Saul is a mean man. I am afraid of him, God said to Ananias. I have chosen Saul to bring my story to many people. I have a plan for him. Ananias found Saul just as God had said. Ananias prayed for Saul, and Saul was filled with God's Holy Spirit. Suddenly, Saul could see again. Ananias told Saul that God had a job for him. Saul was to tell people about Jesus. Saul was baptized, and his name was changed to Paul. Paul served God for the rest of his life. He became a friend of Jesus and told many people how Jesus changed his heart. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Wanna, you can come over to We're the middle here. See how that goes together. Kaylin, there's room if you want to come right here. Okay, so you've got that one together. What might that be? I wanna, All those? Aaron? A holy leaf. A holy leaf. A holy leaf. Let's hold it up. Here, why don't you give it to me and I'll hold it up so they can see what it's, this they is put tough. together. This is tough. It's, an egg oh. was a good guess. Does anyone in the congregation know what this might be? Think Easter, think, not egg. Think nature. Nature, Easter. That's hard to see up front. Okay, so we're going to okay, tell okay. you. No, we're not. No, not we're yet. not. not yet. Never mind. So we're going to get the next puzzle, and we're going to see if that will help us figure out what the first one was. Okay, can you guys put this one together? Put it together. What does the head 
Well, see if, put it on there and see if you can. It's a worm. Almost. Wait. Lillian, what do you think? It is a caterpillar chrysalis, or cocoon. Good work, Alexis. Here, hand me this so I can show the cute little caterpillar to the rest of them. I can say it's cute because I drew it. Pastor Pat drew this beautiful caterpillar. So we have a cocoon, we have a caterpillar, and one it's more. A it's a butterfly. A butterfly. Okay, so starting with our cocoon, I wonder if there's anybody in our story today that was kind of in a cocoon. He couldn't see anything. Or kind of wormy to start with. Yes, Alexis. Saul, great memory. Yes, Saul. Saul was in a cocoon and he couldn't see. And why, why was Saul unable to see? What was he doing that was not good? Yes, he was being rude to them. He was persecuting Christians, which is the exact opposite of what Jesus wants us to do, right? So Saul was being a bad man. So at that time, we can think of Saul like this cocoon because he couldn't see. And then, what happened next in the story? Why couldn't he see? He was bullying Christians and arresting them. And then what happened to him on the road to that Damascus, Sierra? Jesus made a really great light in the midst when he went to the tomb to dress to be born in that day. Jesus made a really bright light, and it says there was a big crash and boom. And when the lights are too bright, you can't see really good. And it actually made it's all blind. Very good details. So Jesus caused that to happen because Saul was being a bully. But was Jesus going to leave him blind? No. What happened next? Well, so he's in this cocoon now, kind of blind. What happened next? Um, Alexis? Jesus told Ananias to tell Saul God had a job for him. And it wasn't being a bully. It was spreading the word about Jesus and God, to telling other people about God's love. God gives every single one of us a job to share his love and his word with others, just like Saul did. Not when he was in a cocoon, not when he was a caterpillar, but when he transformed into a butterfly. So Jesus transforms our lives, and we are all transformed in our life of faith. And hmm, when are we transformed in our life of faith? Where do we begin our life of faith? Aaron. When you are born. Yes, and then after you're born, your parents bring you to church for a certain thing. Alexis. To get baptized in Let's baptism. Take a trip over the baptismal font. Because there's actually water in there from the baptism. So take let's right, take let's, let's go on a over. journey to the baptismal font. You want to take a journey? Nope. Okay. So sometimes we might feel like caterpillars, we might feel like we're in a cocoon, like we might be sad and Sometimes we feel like butterflies, but wherever we are in our faith journey, we always have one thing that's true about us, especially true. Well, I've got a lot of things, but it's true. But one thing that never, ever changes is that we are baptized. And we are God's, what? Children, children beloved children. Can you, 
dip your hand in there. I wonder what happens to us as a person when we are baptized. Can you make the sign of your cross, the cross on your head with the water, and say, I am baptized? When you are baptized, you become a new person, and you get a new life. And do you know what? Any time that you make a mistake or you do something wrong, you get to start all over again because Jesus forgives you, and he transforms your life just like he transformed Paul's life in our story today. Every, Isn't that awesome? Every day it's like we come out of a cocoon and we're made, God makes us new. God's love is new every morning. So if you had a bad day the day before, you wake up and say, I'm baptized. This is a new day. God loves me and God's got something for me to do. What might God have for you to do as, as students and as sons and daughters? What might your some work be that God has for you. To learn. To learn, exactly. Um, to be friends. That's a job that God has for you, is friendship. Um, to love your parents as they love you. To play and have fun in this life. That's a job God has for us. God wants us to be happy and to play. All sorts of jobs. And if you look out here in the congregation, these are all made new people in Jesus too, all baptized people, and they have all sorts of jobs, as many as people, as there are people here. And sometimes God has work for us, like I'm a mom, I'm a wife, I'm a pastor, I'm a teacher, I'm a friend. Those are all, that's all work God has for me to do, and I can do it because God makes me strong in baptism. We only need one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, but we can remember our baptism every single day. Is there anything that you guys do when you wake up in the morning that might help us remember our baptism? Aaron. Grab, your, grab some water and dip your fingers in it and make a cross on your forehead. Yep. yep. Grab some water. Yes. Make a cross. When you wash your face or when you wash your hands, these are some ways that we can remember that we are baptized and made new every single day. Okay, do what you do when you pray. Dear God, thank you for giving us Jesus and the Holy Spirit who transform our life. Thank you for giving us life, life that we could never imagine. Help us to be servants for you and witnesses of your life-giving love in the world. Help us to let your power transform our life. Amen. Amen. And we all through our life, we're on this baptismal journey, which is going to tie into our next song. So fly like a butterfly to wherever you are going next to sing. And this is a really fun song if you want to be up front here and watch the words on the screen so you can sing along.
if Aaron Yeager and his mom would come forward and Alexis Janish and her parents would come forward, we have Bibles to present these third graders. Hi Alexis, hi Erin. This is so exciting because you guys will be receiving your fourth grade Bibles grade. today. They're third grade Bibles, but you're now in fourth grade, so well, you guys have been waiting so long to get these. They'll be in fourth grade, yeah. Anyway, exciting. When your parents brought you for baptism, they promised to place in your hands the Bible, the Holy Scriptures, to nurture your life in faith and in prayer to share with others the message of Christ through word and deed, to care for others in all that God has made, and to work for mercy, justice, and peace. On the same day, the congregation promised to help them fulfill that promise. Today, we join together in taking an important step toward fulfilling these promises. This is a special time in your life. You are in third grade. Reading has become a part of your daily life. You are getting old enough to read the Bible, talk about it with your parents, friends, and teachers at church, and learn from the Bible what it means to live life as a child of God. The Bible that your parents are about to present you is a gift from your congregation. This is a study Bible which is meant to be read and used and marked up. Please give your child his or her Bible saying, this is the word of the Lord. And child, please respond, thank you, and thanks be to God. And parents, maybe as you um, look at this with your child, you could go and maybe highlight some of your favorite verses for them. And over time, um, Alexis and Aaron, I hope you find lots of favorite verses that you want to underline. Um, you, when you get to confirmation, bring it to confirmation. Use it for your Sunday school lessons. Um, and if you come early to church some weekend and you grab me, I'll highlight, I forgot to highlight my favorite verses and Katie can highlight some of hers. So let us pray. Gracious God, your word is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. Bless this Bible, the parents who give it and the child who receives it. Speak your word to them that they may know the promise of your love, trust the goodness of your grace, Follow the way that leads from darkness into light and live as your children now and forever through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. You may give them a round of applause. All right, you can return to your seats. Thank you. Please stand as you're able as we continue with the Apostles' Creed. Let us confess our faith together. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. 
On the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven, he is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Sebastian is going to help us with our prayers of intercession. Set free from captivity to sin and death, we pray to the God of resurrection for the church, people in need, and all of creation. Holy One of new beginnings, you feed us with your word and holy meal. Bind together all who eat at Jesus' table, that we may be a visible sign of your presence in the world. Guide the work of synods, bishops, and leaders in this season of synod assemblies. God, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. You open our eyes and we marvel at the beauty of your creation. Teach us to be good stewards of the waters and lands, of the plants and animals. God, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. You widen our hearts to care for peoples and nations around the globe. Guide local, national, and world leaders with their wisdom, that their decisions would foster peace and equity. Bring an end to the war between Russia and Ukraine. God, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. You tend your lambs that are lost in pain or ill. Heal the wounded, comfort the afflicted, bless the dying, soothe the suffering, and teach us the way of compassion. We pray especially for joy, Shirley, Ayla, Becca, Iona, Larry, Mary, Becky, Steve and Lana, Katie, John, Andy, Chad, Dan, Chase, Gabriella, Marilyn, Jeff, and for those we name aloud or in our hearts. God, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. You call us to follow you like the fisherfolk of Galilee. Strengthen our congregation in our work and in our play, in our weeping and rejoicing. God, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. You inspire us with prophets and saints who recognized you as Lord and Savior. Encourage us with their witness from beyond the grave. God, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. In your mercy, O God, respond to these prayers and renew us by your life-giving spirit through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you all. Please share signs of peace with one another. The ushers want to bring forward the offering, and I believe we've got someone bringing the noisy offering. Does anybody yet have anything for the noisy offering? Okay. Thank you. Okay, our, yep, there, and right behind you, there you go, and then over this way, I think Anne's got some right there. Back there, there we go. Thank you all so much for your 
generous stewardship for Crossways Camps and for the ministry of this church. So let us pray the offering prayer together. God of love, you call us beloved children and welcome us to your table. Receive our lives and the gifts we offer. Abide with us and send us in service to a suffering world for the sake of your beloved child, Jesus Christ. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, for the glorious resurrection of our Savior, Jesus Christ, the true Paschal Lamb who gave himself to take away our sin, who in dying has destroyed death and in rising has brought us to eternal life. And so with Mary Magdalene and Peter and all the witnesses of the resurrection, with earth and sea and all their creatures and with angels and archangels, cherubim and seraphim, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. <laughs> The night Jesus was betrayed, he took bread. He gave thanks and broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Let us proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Pour out upon us the spirit of your love, O Lord, and unite the wills of all who share this heavenly food, the body and blood of Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the laughter of the Holy Spirit be all honor and glory now and forever. Amen. We pray as Jesus has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The risen Christ dwells with us here. All who hunger and thirst come, for everyone is welcome. You may be seated. For those worshiping online, the body of Christ broken for you. The blood of Christ shed for you.
please stand as you're able. May the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in God's grace. Amen. Let us pray. We give you thanks, generous God, for in this bread and cup we have tasted the new heaven and earth, where hunger and thirst are no more. Send us from this table as witnesses to the resurrection, that through our lives all may know life in Jesus' name. Amen. Receive the benediction. May you feel the presence of the risen Christ with you, and may the God of hope bless you now and forever. Amen. Just a note now on this last hymn, and Marlene, I really hate to say this, but we would par play it just a hair slower than last night, because even I had to catch my breath. <laughs> so when I learned this song, and we sang it a lot in my home congregation, and I had a very, very dear friend there who every time, when it got to the part on the refrain where it says, all our hearts were filled with gladness, she'd go, it goes, all our hearts are filled with gladness, or gladness. She would clap on that part, and all of a sudden she got all of us clapping on that part. So I'm going to, and if you want to follow me, you are invited to do so. Strong in faith, free of doubt. I mean, are we ever really free in doubt? So I sing strong in faith, strong in doubt. <laughs> anyway, go in peace and tell what God has done. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Hallelujah. Woo!